I welcome the participants in this session of gender analysis and budgeting. I will be taking uh, some concepts uh, and uh, those will be discussed with you in this session. The concepts like gender mainstreaming, gender analysis and budgeting, gender and five year plans in India, what those five years uh, during those five year plans, what exactly was done in gender mainstreaming, gender budgeting concept and evaluation conceptual framework of gender budgeting and some examples of gender concerns in various ministries of government of India will be given and gender stages and entry points will be discussed with you. Now if we see what is gender analysis, it is like a very, uh, it can be taken in a very generic term but basically it's at, uh, it has a very in-depth meaning. It is a critical examination of the issues as they affect women and men and girls and boys. It's not a way of deprioritizing men, but it implies a very, uh, it's a giving priority to women's need and interest in certain setup. Another important concept is gender mainstreaming. The administrators and the professionals must have a knowledge and awareness of the ways gender affect education, health, workplace, policies, etc. To address gender issues whenever appropriate and thus make their work more effective. The process, this is basically a process of creating this knowledge and awareness of and responsibility of gender among is uh, called gender mainstreaming. Now what is gender analysis? It's important to understand that this particular term tells us about the rules, norms and practices of social institutions that keep the division of labor and distribution of resources between women and men in place. This is basically a collection analysis of gender desegregation data. This is uh, different roles, tasks and responsibilities, different needs, interests and capacities of women and differences in access and control of resources and benefits that are there for, the, for women. Now what are the responsible factors for this analysis? The first I'll just name them and then I'll explain them. That is access, access to information. Prevalent knowledge, beliefs and perceptions are very important. Practices and participation of women, time and space availability, what are the legal rights and what is the status in particular setup and decision making power, who has this decision making power. So these are the certain parameters which are responsible for or the factors which are responsible for gender analysis. What are the seven steps for gender analysis? The seven steps I would name uh, and explain each of them. First is the planned secondary data collection. How will anticipated result of the work affect women and men differently? It's important to have this planned secondary data. Second is how will the different roles and status of women and men affect the work to be undertaken? This is reviewing the secondary data sources. Third is analysis of secondary data. Then the fourth will be identify critical information gaps and constraints that exist in this secondary data. Next will be develop a primary data set collection of plan and instruments. Next is the data analysis and the last but not least is the constraints analysis. So these are the seven steps for gender ana analysis. Now I'll show you a documentary so that all these three, four concepts are very clear to you before we get into what exactly is gender budgeting. What is gender budgeting? It's important to understand each word of it. Gender budgeting is concerned with gender sensitive formulation of legislation, policies, plans, programs and schemes. This is allocation and collection of resources, implementation and execution, monitoring, review, audit, impact assessment of programs and schemes and follow up corrective actions to address gender disparities. So it is a very holistic term that is there when we consider the uh, gender analysis and gender based gender budgeting uh, sensitive formulation. It's important to understand why we do gender budgeting. Why gender budgeting? Women underrepresented in decision making in most of the sectors. The nature of work and implications are different for men and women. And women are engaged in unpaid work, bearing, rearing and caring. 
So it's important why we do gender analysis and gender budgeting. Gender budgeting is not about separate budget for women, men, girl or boy. This is setting aside X percent for gender or women. Money for women, counselors to control. 50 male, 50 female for every expenditure. All money for children. Not an accounting exercise, but an ongoing process of keeping a gender perspective in policy, program formulation, its implementation and review is what is gender budgeting and we have already given what gender budgeting is not. Now there is a particular approach of Ministry of Women and Child Development to gender budgeting. In gender budgeting, gender usually means women and her empowerment. To extend the process to all level of governance that is center, state and district, town and villages and also to public sector units and autonomous bodies and also to extend it to the civil societies and corporate sectors. Now who are these actors, actors in gender budgeting? The Ministry of Women and Child Development, Nodal Ministry at the central level in India, Ministry of Finance at the center and in the states, the Planning Department of Planning Commission at the center and in the states, sectoral ministries, each and every department and ministry can do gender budgeting and researchers and economists, statistician and women's group can also do gender budgeting. So these are some of the actors who are there in gender budgeting. Now, What is the scope of this gender budgeting? It extends to the whole budget impact of expenditure of selected department or program, gender sensitive design of new programs and projects, assessment of selected forms of revenue and changes in tax system and new legislation. Everything that is there is a very holistic way it determines the scope of gender budgeting. Gender budgeting initiatives are very diverse, nature of the work differs like actors are government led, civil society or parliament led. Focus will be fully on full budget versus selected sectors. The focus again is on sector like health, pro problems like gender based violence. Level is it could be national, it could be versus state, district. Timing can be post budget analysis versus in process budget formulation. An approach is a separate gender budget statement or gender integrated throughout main budget documents. Now I'll give some examples of gender budgeting, gender budgeting analysis by Ministry of Women and Child Development. In 2004 and 5, the Ministry of Women and Child Development adopted a three-pronged strategy. That was first is advocating for setting up of gender budgeting structures, mechanism in all the ministries and departments of Government of India, strengthening internal and external capacities and budgeting expertise to undertake gender mainstreaming of policies, schemes and programs and also initiating the exercise of gender auditing which I will be explaining to you in the next session of existing programs which would then feed into addressing the, these gaps that exist in gender mainstreaming. Gender budgeting and appraisal of legislation. I will give you some examples of gender analysis and gender mainstreaming. For instance in MG Narega. MG Narega provides guarantee at the level of the household and not at the level of the individuals. So the right of the women was always a question. An intervention by the Department of Women and Child Development led to the addition of a clause that requires that at least one third of the beneficiaries under MG Narega should be women. Another scheme is National Food Security Act 2013. Under the Food Security Act, every pregnant and lactating mother is entitled to receive maternity benefit of rupees 6000. Indira Gandhi Matritva Sahyog Yojana, a maternity benefit scheme launched in 2010 and being implemented in 53 pilot districts, has been recast under the National Food Security Act 2013. It ensures part compensation for wage loss to pregnant and lactating women before and after the delivery of the child. Now it's important to know that why implement gender budgeting. I'll give you some examples like Disha, a scholarship scheme of Department of Science and Technology 
This was to provide support to women scientists. It helps re-entry of women scientists after a break in their career path due to social responsibilities. UGC runs a daycare center for married scholars, students in universities and colleges for providing daycare facility. To establish a fully literate society and government has been successfully running the odd adult literacy centers Sakshir Bharat throughout the country with focus on female literacy. Pursuits of gender concerns with various ministries. Now this is Ministry of Finance, a microfinance and its regulation to prevent exploitation, including a column on gender outcomes in outcoming budget of Government of India to ensure the gender concerns that was kept at a very high level. Then Department of Com Commerce also kept the gender implication of women in SEZ project and w WTO agreements. Ministry of Environment, for instance, to make available carbon emission reduction credits under the Kaito protocol to women SSGs to income generation purposes. Ministry of Sports and Youth Affairs, for instance, raising participation of women in sports and according them due recognition. Youth bodies of Nehru Yuva Kendras and NSS to propagate against female fetishize. Ministry of Women and Child Development is drawing a campaign plan. Declining sex ratio to be part of training program for national social volunteers and Nehru Yuva Kendras. Ministry of External Affairs. It is to set up help, uh, helpline in embassies, high commissions abroad for deserted wives, trafficked women, enable immediate shelter, medical and legal aid and repatriation for women in distress. Then Ministry of Overseas Indian Affairs, it has issue of deserted wives of NRI marriage, Periodical return on the status of welfare of female domestic uh, servants in foreign country, especially Gulf, by employer and tighter immigration measures. Ministry of Urban Development, Jawahar Lal Urban Renewal Mission. It provides safe housing, crash facility, health care center and maternity center, hygiene, roadside public toilets for women and shelter for women in need of protection, proper street lighting and transport facilities which are gender friendly. Ministry of Agriculture for instance, National Gen Gender Response Center in Agriculture serves as a focal point for convergence of all gender related issues in agriculture and develop women friendly farm implements, access to credit, better seeds, fertilizers, marketing linkages etc. So these are some of those ministries which I have mentioned where there has been a gender min, uh, mainstreaming and gender analysis and some special provisions that have been provided for the gender and we will be dealing in depth and in details about all these programs. Gender Charter, a combined charter of Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Women and Child Development. Ministry of Finance issued the Gender Charter on March 8, 2007 and had mandated the role of GBC the salient features of the charters uh, that incorporated that in gender neutral sectors such as defense, power, telecom, communication, transport and industry etc. The GBCs may undertake exercise to identify the possibility or undertake initiatives, special measures to facilitate and improve access to services for women and their active participation in decision making processes at various levels. So these are some of the sectors and some of the ministry initiatives of gender mainstreaming and gender uh, based budget process which I have discussed. In depth we will be dealing with all these things in, uh, in the next class and also gender audit whether the actions and the initiatives taken by the ministries are in a way properly implemented and what is the outcome of this will be the next session. Thank you participants.